Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. I'm gonna go through the broad markets. We'll look at some individual trade ideas. I do wanna cover the FANG stocks because they were relatively strong today and we'll go ahead and wrap up after that. So if you guys are finding value in the content, drop me a thumbs up. Again, if you're new, we're covering trade ideas, hopefully profitable ones, they're not all profitable. So again, you want, we wanna manage our risk. We don't wanna load up in, in, on any one position size and think that's the one that's gonna be the winning one. We definitely wanna diversify, manage our risk, take equal position sizes across the board so that we can get um, in, you know, high accuracy across multiple trades, not just a single trade. So if you guys are finding value in that, please drop me a thumbs up, I do appreciate it. Also, if you're interested in learning this as a skill set, check out my stock market technical analysis course. Multiple videos broken down into individual concepts, and then I give you guys a finalized checklist to find high probability setups and, and high probability uh, trade, really just putting it all together to find good probability trades. Link in the description below on that one. And then finally, private member group, I am in there. Uh, talking with the members and communicating about additional trade ideas and what I'm seeing in the markets kind of throughout the day. So if you're interested in that, five bucks a month, link in the description below for there. All right, let's go ahead and get into the charts. We'll start off here with triple Qs because tech has been relatively strong. So bigger picture daily chart, we have a downtrend line right there. That's your bear market. Broke out, traded down a little bit, and today you can see kind of breaking out of this most recent downtrend line. I mean, you got three reactions right there and that is a breakout for sure, okay? So definitely want to keep an eye on that and I'll show you guys, you know, as we'll kind of dig down into the uh, more granular charts and see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, that is uh, a breakout though for sure on that one. There is obviously the potential, I know I, people see it, but there is the potential for a bull flag um, you've got the big old flag right flag pole, then you got the flagging action, and then what you would do is you take that flag and kind of measure it out. That your major target really puts us up around this eh, somewhere right around 340, 343, 344 area in triple Qs. So if that flag pole, if this is going to be a bull flag, that would be the major target. I'm a little suspect of it, but again, we'll keep an eye on that. That's obviously possible. Anything is possible. We don't want to fall in love with any one trade or trade you know, idea. Something doesn't have to actually play out. If we think it's going to because the charts tell us to, doesn't mean it's going to. So it's all about managing the risk, knowing kind of when you're wrong so you can get out with limited amount of losses because the name of the game in this business is to know how to take losses uh, and no, you know, that, I mean, you have to be able to take losses in this, in, in trading. You're not going to get every trade right and you don't want to fall in love and really dig in your heels and think you have to be right. So that's critical. Um, let's break it down to the hourly chart and then I'll go back to the daily and show you guys a couple things. On the hourly chart, you can see here's that breakout. Pretty impulsive. I mean, I can't knock it. You know, it's just a breakout and they were buying it, buying tech uh, pretty much all day today. And that is really it. We did have some negative divergence uh, prior. You can see it, it kind of looked like that, but that's been burned through on the hourly. So you can see we made kind of strong momentum today, making new higher high on the PPO, kind of an equal high here on the RSI. So, well, slightly less. You could still say the negative divergence is there on the RSI. See how we made lower momentum uh, with higher price. So, you know, mixed on that one, but to see it kind of burn through on the PPO, that's telling me something, telling me that maybe there's a little more upside. Uh, and then um, we'll go over to the NASDAQ futures and then I wanna go back to the daily chart. Here's the NASDAQ futures. Again, burn through the negative divergence. We had some negative divergence on the hourly, but that's been burned through. So we broke out and burned through the divergence. It just, you know, it tells me that this breakout is not, something you know it, it, as of right now it's a breakout and it, 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 i don't see any real high probability that this breakout is going to be faded at least in the near term uh looks bullish to me uh, on the hourly now if i go back to the daily um let's look at the daily here one thing i do want to point out and this is what i, I this is where i think markets are going um again on the daily 
You can see we popped over. I think we're going to pop over this recent high here on the daily, make a new high. I don't know how far it's going to run, but I think we'll make likely a new high and it's going to be a divergent high. All right. It's see the momentum is dropping off. So clearly if we make a new high anytime soon, maybe in the next day, maybe to close out the week, that high is going to be negative divergence on the daily chart. And that sets us up for a potentially bigger drop to the downside. Doesn't mean we have to drop to the downside, but it definitely tells me to start looking for a potential reversal on this uptrend line. So something to kind of keep an eye on. I think we're gonna make a new high. I think we'll have negative divergence when we make that new high. And at that point, I'll be looking for signs of a sell signal for, a, for that major trend to the downside. So again, I'd been talking about this as a potential in the past. I was kind of looking for it right here. Right here, I was thinking, okay, we're probably gonna go make a new, a new high. It'll be a divergent high. And then we'll look for the next major leg down. We didn't get it there and we started to roll over here. And so I just assumed, okay, maybe we don't make the divergent high and we just roll over. Uh, and one of the reasons why I thought that is because of the SPY had broken its major trend line. Uh, and, and that still, you know, still could be the case. But as of right now, especially in tech, uh, it does, we're so close to making a new high. I think we could easily gap up or make that maybe even tomorrow. Okay, so that is the NASDAQ futures. And here's triple Q's, same thing on triple Q's. You can see on the daily chart, we got to just, you know, we pop over about 311 or so, somewhere right in there. It's going to be a divergent high, all right, on the daily chart. And that does set us up for a potential big drop in the near future. Um, so these are the things I'll be watching for, you know, in the next day and really next week. Do we make the di divergent high? Do we get some sort of a sell signal after that divergent high? Things like that we'll be looking for. And that'll set us up for uh, kind of a major drop. Flip over to the SPY here. SPY is, you know, SPY's been playing some games with us for sure. You can see here on the SPY daily chart, here's your downtrend line. All right, we broke out, back tested once, back tested twice, broke down, tested resistance, failed. Today, tested, broke out above resistance and the 200 day moving average. So very, very choppy price action. It ha it definitely has been difficult to trade. Uh, I've definitely had a more success recently in just individual trade ideas than I have the broad markets. Um, on this one, you know, again, you broke out and then it, they faded it. It broke down. They rallied it. It's 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 chopping through this kind of level, uh, just whipping us around a lot. So as of right now. We have a breakout. We're above the 200 day moving average. We are above this downtrend line. We after breaking down. So in the short term, that's bullish. Can't take any, uh, can't take anything away from that. So we will watch to see where this goes. I'm really keying in on the triple Q's because I think the Q's, if we can make that divergent high and then get that sell signal, then the spy should follow. And then small caps IWM. Daily chart, here's your downtrend line on the daily, broke out, okay, failed, broke down, and today, we can't say, today we're just testing resistance from below. So, you know, again, I I don't think it makes sense to really take a position on this one um, until we kind of figure out where the rest of the markets are going to go. I did stop out of my triple Q short uh, earlier today. Uh, mentioned to the private member group that I was doing that. I did stop out because again, the chart just looks bullish. I can't knock this breakout candle here. And it does seem to me that, okay, we'll probably go up and make that divergent high. There's not a whole lot more upside. You know, I think there's another maybe 2% or so upside, maybe 3% in tech uh, before we start having that those divergent highs where we'll likely get sold into. Um, but again, I saw it starting to break out. I figured might as well just sidestep some of that price action to the upside. So I did stop out. I'll look to reshort it up, you know, when we get our next sell signal. Uh, I do want to look at these fangs, all right? Amazon. And I did cover this for the private member group already. So guys, if you're part of that group and you're not interested, maybe just fast forward to the, you know, other trade ideas. Uh, Amazon coming into big resistance here. Uh, you can see as I roll out on the daily chart, You've got, look, this is a really key level. Look, there's a gap right there. 
held support right through there. So 102.70 is big, big, uh, a big level, and we're below it, so it should act as resistance. We also have an island top pattern here. And again, so that island top signals a reversal, and we kind of have a move down, strong rally into resistance. So I'm looking for Amazon to really get sold into at that resistance level. So a little more upside till we hit it because we haven't quite hit it, maybe another 2% or so, and that will hit that major resistance. Um, so that's that. Google, major resistance, really just trading into it today, maybe a little more upside. They might trade into it tomorrow too, but uh, big resistance here at 102. Uh, you can see the 200 day simple moving average is right there. You've also got this upward trend line really coming off of the 2015 lows. That kind of falls right in there. And then this downward trend line right here, one, two, three reactions. And so big zone of resistance right up there. So Amazon and Google just underneath major resistance levels. Apple. Apple is has decent resistance about 157.44. You can see here I've got, I've kind of got it. I know my chart's a mess, but because I already highlighted this, but there it is, reaction, reaction. Um, kind of a cluster right through there, gap up right on that level there, some more cluster right there, resistance, 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 and just we're basically right there. So Apple's trading up into a major level of resistance. While it do, does that right now, it also has negative divergence, okay? There's the negative divergence on Apple. Um, we made kind of a new high today, and it's a divergent high. So I think we're going to get faded into. Maybe there's another day or so of some upside, but I think the upside's relatively limited. Uh, maybe another, Apple's got another percent or so before it starts hitting that major resistance. So we could pop it, but in general, I think it's going to get sold into with this divergence at, in play. Meta trading into some resistance here. This is a divergent high on the daily chart, all right? You can see making higher high, higher highs in price, lower highs in momentum as of right now. Not fully confirmed. You need to see these turn down to confirm, but it is divergent high as of right now. So that is something to look at. Microsoft, divergent high, all right? Made a new high today, strong bullish price action, but it is negative divergence as of right now. So. Not fully confirmed. Again, we'd want to see these start to turn down um, and confirm, all right? They, we don't have that yet. So if this just continues to ramp higher, we're going to burn through whatever divergence is there. So we definitely want to see that confirm. Uh, Microsoft has some decent resistance just overhead at about 283.15. You can see that was support, support, support. And then, you know, there's been several reactions, especially right here, you see, Gapped up right there, gapped down. Just shows that we're reacting right around that level. And, you know, just a little bit more upside and we'll start hitting that. So another 2% or so on Microsoft. So again, that's what I'm seeing on a lot of these FANG stocks is they're just under major levels of resistance and they're, and they're starting to put in negative divergence. Not confirmed, but they definitely have it right as, as of right now. So what I think is going to happen, going back to the queues, I think we could easily, I think we're going to pop these highs, put in a new high, a divergent high, just as those big fang stocks are all running into their major resistance levels, and that'll be kind of the near term top. And then we'll have a tradable trend or swing short to the downside. Okay, that's my thesis. I'm going to go off of until proven wrong. Here's gold, gold futures. Again, I don't see anything wrong here. The only thing I do see potential for if we continue up and run up and pop this high, probably gonna be a divergent high. All right, so something to look for. Again, we don't have that divergent high yet, um, but you know, we keep going, we'll, we'll likely get it. So that's something to look for. And then the bonds, I noticed that the bonds, here's TLT. Again, we have this trend line to watch. You can see right here, I've got support, support, support. Then it broke and it was resistance and today resistance pretty much rejected right off of that, which means that likely, and that's a bearish engulfing as well, but it's likely bonds are gonna start to sell down a little bit. And as that happens, interest rates are going to rise. And as interest rates rise, one, that could, that could and will likely put pressure on gold. So keep in mind on that. It might make sense to start taking some profit or just be well, 
you know, just be willing to write it down if, if you see that to buy the dip. Um, and, and then that should put pressure on tech as well. Interest rates, tech is very interest rate sensitive. So as interest rates rise, then tech should fall. And here's the interest rates, TNX. Okay, on this one, you look at like the hourly chart, you'll see here, bullish divergence on the hourly. All right, um, we're making kind of a low, a lower low. So those are divergent lows. We have this trend line to watch and we popped it today. So in general, that's a buy signal for rates. That means rates are likely going to continue higher. And as rates go higher, I think it's going to put pressure on tech. So here's what I'm saying. I think there's maybe limited upside in tech. I can easily say see us making that new divergent high. But as rates continue to rise, we should see a reversal and, and probably a pretty decent short setup for tech. Um, I thought we were going to have it now. It looks like you know I was wrong on that one. So we stop out, take our loss, and look to reposition uh, at, a, at a better setup. Okay. So some trades that we did get right this week, we can see CAT nailed that one pretty mm -hmm. decent. On the daily chart, you will see, we basically, uh, we took the short on this. I kept pointing it out that this was the sell signal right here. We back tested for a few days. I know a lot of people lost hope on those back tests, but still looked good to me. And then, and then a clear rejection and a gap down right there like that. And then, uh, you know, it's pretty much selling ever since. Uh, we fell to our profit target here and the 200-day moving average about 212. I had it set at about 211, but the 200-day moving average was at two, about 212. So as we hit that, it didn't make sense to hold out for that last little bit. And I did cover and take profit on that trade. So that was a good one. Okay, Starbucks talked about this one, especially to the private member group. We were hitting support about 97 right here and you can see I had that marked out before reaction reaction and then we hit that so bouncing off of that we're bouncing into resistance I think there's some resistance about 10130 so potentially an opportunity to uh, reshort that thing for the next move down probably down to the 200 day moving average about 9330 good support down there I, I definitely like that as a uh, support zone so that's where I see that one heading uh, semiconductors, I know uh, NVIDIA, a lot of people have been frustrated with this one. Obviously the candle today doesn't really help our case, but here's the thing. I think that, again, I think there's limited upside even though it's strong buying today up 5%. You've got negative divergence on the daily. It's just remaining there. You've got this bearish rising wedge pattern. We were back testing it for a few days. Today they were able to kind of recover that wedge, but what you know, you're going to run to the top of the wedge here about 259.30 and that's the next level of resistance. So very consistent with like the triple Q's. You have very, you have some minimal upside. I think there's still a little more upside, but pretty minimal. And then you're going to run into resistance and you're going to have negative divergence. Uh, NVIDIA continues to diverge higher. So it's moving up on lo less and less momentum. I think it's very likely that we probably hit this and then get some sort of a rejection candle, whether it's a gap down or a big red bearish engulfing candle. That's what I'd be looking for. So uh, I continue to remain short on this one. And ExxonMobil, this one has kind of got me guessing a little bit. So I did go flat at the end of the day, but here's the thing. On ExxonMobil, we had a sell signal yesterday. You can see here on the daily chart, We've got a clear trend line. We've got a clear support line there. We have negative divergence that's been building. We had a sell signal just yesterday. All right, it broke that trend, closing basically on the 200-day moving average. And but it was a sell signal, so I was looking for more downside today. Gapping down this morning, down here around 98.02, and um, uh, that was kind of a support level. I can kind of mark that out. You can see we basically have a gap right there. We've got resistance, support. So I figured, okay, that's likely the area where we'll probably hold for today. Um, I covered my short uh, when the market opened and then it did rally up into the 200 day moving average. I reshorted the thing. Let me get, go to the hourly. Reshorted it right there at the 200 day moving average. Faded a little bit down uh, from there, down just a little bit. And I Went, went ahead and closed out my position uh, and went flat uh, to end the day. One of the reasons why, when I look at oil, I can see here oil um, is kind of sitting on a level of support. When I go to, to the daily chart, these oil futures, 
Um, I've got some support right here. This is kind of several reactions right through here. Look, it was resistance, resistance, and it was support through here, support through here, and that's really right where we're at, right there, about 66.72. So that, you know, I don't, I don't like the fact that the oil, the commodity, is sitting on pretty good support, uh, and then wanting to short XOM. At least not need a little more information here on this one, guys. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. It was a quick two percent, two three percent trade. Uh, just took that money, and we'll, we'll see how that kind of pans out. Uh, over the over the near term okay that's all i have for today guys i'll get the video out and i'll catch you guys on the next one bye